you're good. Patron. Patron stocking, come here. This is my favorite part of the videos, by the way. All right, all right, all right. Who is our featured patron? It is Megan C. Megan, Megan, Megan. I hope that you are well. I hope, no, it's okay, I got you. I hope that life is being kind to you, Megan. You bring such joy to my heart. Thank you so much for being a Paletti pal. So, it's been a few weeks uh, since I've seen you guys. When I ghost my YouTube channel, especially, <laughs> Uh, there's usually a reason why. It's usually I'm not doing so good. It usually means something's wrong, something is amiss, something is sad, bad, stressful. Yeah, it usually just means something's not good. And I only like to make videos when I'm feeling good. I don't like making sad videos, they're not fun for me, and I don't want my happier videos to be inauthentic when I'm not feeling that, so usually that just means I ghost. What even? What is happening? <laughs> I try very hard today, as you can probably tell. So this video, while it is a <laughs> weird way to bring in the holiday season on my channel, um, I think it's important to talk about. We are discussing grief and loss and healing and how I've been trying to heal and but also, we're doing a DIY because <laughs> I don't like to just talk about serious things. I also like to crap. So that's what we're doing today. But we're also talking about grief and sad things. So this might be a bit of a weird one. So if you've just stumbled upon this video, I don't know how or why, but welcome. Um, I, uh, haven't even started yet. <sighs> Don't you fall. Don't you fall. I should probably grab some tissues. <laughs> Where's my beauty blender? I need a beauty blender. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We have tissues and a beauty blender. We are prepared now. I will probably be crying this whole video, so just pretend it's not happening. <laughs> just roll with it. Roll with it. Be cool. <laughs> Very fragile. <laughs> so, if you've stumbled upon this video and you're like, what is wrong with you? Um, in August, can't believe it's been that long. It's been three and a half months already. Um, feels like yesterday, but. <laughs> so I'm a mess. <laughs> um, so in August, in August, I lost my best friend, my, <laughs> my cat, Pipesicles, to cancer, and if you were thinking, <laughs> oh my god, it's a cat, get over it, you are probably not the audience for this video, so you can leave, thank you, <laughs> but, uh, okay, <laughs> I don't think that we talk about it enough. Um, I don't think that people talk about how hard it is to lose a pet enough. Um, and people tend to just kind of brush it off like, oh, they're 
just pets or just a cat. Um, excuse me, how dare you belittle them like that? I think the people that say that have either never had a pet or never been close to a pet because this has been a freaking nightmare. It sucks so much. And people don't talk about it, really. You're just supposed to get over it. How? She was my best friend. No. Oh, I was doing so good for like three seconds. Stop it. I mean, there's days that are better than others, of course. There's days that are good. And then there's a lot of days that are really bad. And a lot of moments, even within the good days, that are bad. One day, you could be laughing and having fun. But that doesn't take away or invalidate the days that you're sad. Like, you can do both. You probably will do both. Like, just because I had fun terrorizing my sister <laughs> when we were playing in our Halloween clothes, it doesn't mean that wasn't real. Just because I was crying to her right before. I have... <laughs> I have a word that I call feeling eggy. <laughs> I can like look at Bean if he sees something in my eyes, like if I have this face going on, he's like, are you okay? And I'm, I can just be like, I'm feeling eggy. And what that means basically is that I'm feeling very fragile and like I could break at any moment is basically what eggy means. And that has been a good, um, like, communication tool for me for getting across what I'm feeling sometimes. I think communication is really important. Um, having someone to talk to is really important. And even if you can't, um, like, express how you're feeling or you don't have a word for how you're feeling or if you don't know a word um, to explain it, you need to make one up. And that's how we got eggy. I am eggy. <laughs> All the time now. I'm like the only person in the world who <laughs> has an egg in their frequently used emojis. No one <laughs> uses the egg but me. I'm very eggy. So anyway, I have a lot to say in today's video. I want to talk about things I've been doing to address my egginess and um things that i've been doing to try to cope to try to heal i have a lot i want to talk about i have a lot of things to say but i also want to do a little diy while i talk to you guys it's kind of more of a serious topic but i also do want to make a craft <laughs> so let's start that and then we'll kind of talk while we're crafting i guess i don't really know i don't have a plan i don't know how i'm gonna edit this I hope it makes sense, and if it doesn't, oh well. <laughs> so a few years ago, I decided that I wanted to start making a custom Christmas ornament each year that kind of represented that year. So that when we put up a Christmas tree, we're putting the ornaments on, we can kind of have a story of our lives through Christmas ornaments of each year. You know what I mean? Cute idea, right? I know. So I started making these in 2016 and the very first ornament is my family. Oof, my rainbow hair, do you remember that? And even though our little family actually started in 2009, the ornaments started in 2016 and since my family is just the most important, amazing thing in the world to me. It seemed like an obvious choice for the first ornament. And then the next year, in 2017, we got engaged in Hawaii. Remember that? You guys have been on so many of my life journeys with me. 2017 was a big year because we bought our first house and we got engaged. So there was plenty of choices of things to ornament in 2017. Ornament making time in 2018 rolled around and I was like, um, everything happened in 2017. <laughs> 
2018 I made ornaments for my siblings instead. But now we're on 2019 and there is another obvious, obvious thing of the year. Obviously you want to look back at happy things at Christmas time, um, but I also kind of want these to be important life markers as well. My year this year um, stopped in August. I mean, nothing else has even come close to defining this year for me as losing Pipey. Like, no, nowhere close. <laughs> and there's no question in my mind, like there was last year, about what our ornament should be. It should be Pipey. Oh my god, I've already been talking so long. I haven't even started crafting, and I have an experiment today. Yes, I have an experiment. I normally make my ornaments um, out of polymer clay and then they are lined with felt on the back to kind of give them some support and make them stronger um, so that they can hold up year to year. So these are made out of polymer clay. The first one went really well. Second one got a little bit heavy. This one has to go near the bottom of the tree. So this year I decided I want you to try model magic. If you don't know what it is, we'll go over it shortly when we begin. Basically it's a super lightweight um, molding material. Could be good for an ornament. I don't know, I kinda wanna make like a big fat little pipey, but I don't want it to be as heavy as this guy. Model magic's lightweight. Let's talk about the craft. Let's talk about that first, not the movie, although we could talk about that too. But no, we're gonna talk about our experimental DIY first, and then maybe I'll come back and I'll talk about some of my healing stuff, things I'm doing, ways I'm feeling less eggy, what I'm doing when I feel eggy. All of those things we can talk about <laughs> while we're crafting. Don't know how this video is gonna cut together. Well. We'll find out. Let's talk craft. I have actually never used model magic. Isn't that weird? Like as someone who crafts so often and I love crafting and I love sculpting, and I love molding. I've never used model magic, which is such a common medium for making really lightweight. Um, you can make little prosthetic pieces with it for special effects makeup. You can use it for little cosplay props. I have never used it and I figured today might be our day. I also picked up some fresh polymer clay in case this experiment fails. <laughs> But I'm just up for a little DIY today. Experiment day. I am so interested to see what this feels like. I just have, I just have no idea. Although it looks so satisfying when you watch people play with it online. <sighs> it almost feels like wet. Like it's not wet, but it feels like cool and like damp. Kinda. Oh my god, it feels <laughs> so weird. Ew. Also super interested to see if you can carve, like if you can carve this clay, like little hairs into this clay. Hold on. Oh yeah, we should be able to do this. Oh yeah. Okay, well that was just a test. <laughs> Hi, me again, the egg. I'm gonna talk to you while you watch me make this clay cat. Everyone is going to experience grief at some point in their lives. It doesn't have to be from like losing someone or losing something. You can feel grief from anything. And I know a lot of people feel it a lot around the holidays, um, which is why I kind of wanted to make this now. Also, it's something that's very relevant to me and my life as an egg and um, I just want to share with you some things that I've been doing that have been helping. So for me, uh, me and Pipey did everything together. We were together all the time, which is um, one of the reasons that adjusting to life without her has been so hard. I work at home and I also don't like to do 
fun things like outside my house so I'm like always here so we always spent like all day every day together the two of us are like inseparable you know we called her um my shadow because she'd like follow me everywhere oh, I miss her so much um she like follow me all over the house like everywhere we go she's my little shadow it's really weird not to have her around and it's everything here is a constant reminder that she's not here so so as much as I don't like to leave my house and I'm very much like a little creature of comfort getting out of my house has been really good <laughs> it seems like such a basic thing <laughs> a simple thing um, but when you're grieving or when you're really sad or when you're anxious or depressed uh, oh, sometimes little things can be big things so um, taking a shower leaving your house things like that can seem like mountains to do but doing them for me at least is extremely helpful even if it's just to like go walk around Target I love Target <laughs> The Target employees here at home, they're probably so worried for me. They've probably seen me crying so much in the last three months. <laughs> oh well. So, I don't care. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So, we kind of used to hike every now and then. But, since losing Pipey, we have been doing it a lot more. And it, <sighs> I love it. I love it. It is amazing what uh, getting outside, getting out in nature, getting fresh air, um, especially now that it's cooler, getting some exercise, what that will do for um, your headspace and for your body and, and your mind. And if you want to crumple on the ground in the middle of the forest and burst into tears, you can. <laughs> you totally can do that. Everybody's different. Everybody's grieving looks different. And you don't have to be crumpled in the woods sobbing into a tree to be grieving. You could present completely normal, but be a mushy crying blob on the inside. You know, there's... it looks different. It looks different for different people. And that's okay. But B and I have been doing a lot of hiking and I feel like the activity, the um air being out in nature is just done wonders for me every time we go out I just feel so much better when we get back I'm like oh my god I feel so refreshed um and that's really it really really does make me feel quite a bit better okay let's take a look at how our little fluffy chunky boy is doing over there here is our little pipey who looks like a baby porg I know that it can take like a while for something like this round and thick to dry um like you know it could be days weeks <laughs> before she's all the way dry um but i am just like you know i'm curious about this as an experiment because i want to know if it'll hold up i know sometimes they can shrink curious about that i know sometimes they can crack as they dry curious about that so once she's a little bit harder maybe in like a day or two I'll come back and I want to paint the inside of her ears I want to paint her eyes oh and her paw too her little toe beans I'm gonna paint those on as well she looks really really cute though I hope that it all works out <laughs> I might also make a polymer clay one too just as kind of a backup or as like a I don't know just um I just really enjoyed making this and found it quite like therapeutic and she looks so cute with her little hand. I would love for her to dry it perfectly and be so good and cute, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this is a new experiment for me and good old trusty polymer clay, tried and true. I know a lot more about it. <laughs> and my other yearly ornaments have all been made out of polymer clay and have held up really well. So well, maybe we'll just have two this year. <laughs> Okay, so for this one, I'm basically going to be following all of the same steps. I'm going to try to make it generally look very similar to the other one because the other one's really cute, <laughs> but quite a bit smaller. Um, hopefully 
to help control the weight of the ornament so it doesn't knock my whole tree over, you know? <laughs> We have our trusty little Sculpey here in the same three colors, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to get more detail in the hair, the fur of the little baby pipey. I'm trying to carve the fur into the other medium was like basically trying to carve hair into a marshmallow. If you're into carving marshmallows, I would say this would be a great medium for you. I do love how lightweight it is for such a little chunky boy, so. So for our backup ornament, or maybe our main ornament, depending on which one turns out better, let's get started. Oh, fresh Sculpey. It's the best, it's the best. It'll actually be really cute being so small. Here is the belly of our little butterball. I'm so excited to sculpt the little details on this one. I love sculpting in polymer clay. But I also love experimenting and trying new things, which is why that air dry clay was really fun too. That's gonna be too big <laughs> for her head. It's like the same size as her body. So when I'm attaching two pieces of polymer clay together, I like to use this uh, bacon bond sculpey basically glue like at, when you bake it it like hardens up in there and like it's a really firm kind of glue for polymer clay. I also put an eye pin through the middle of it to kind of build up a little like a little spine for it kind of. You can also cut off this bottom part of the eye pin but since it's going deep into this like base here I don't really care. We'll put it sort of right here. Is it on the bottom? Okay cool yeah that's good. <laughs> and then I will kind of dunkaroo this thing we can stick the little head on. So I think for this one, I'm going to try to make her chest like puffier out. It would look like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna pop up a picture of when she was wearing a, a onesie one time after surgery and her little chest hair just like <laughs> explodes out of the top of the shirt. So I wanna make her chest up here puffier than down at the bottom. So as you can probably tell based on the fact that I'm making another ornament when I just made an ornament, I've been doing a lot of painting, um, a lot of crafts, things that I have always enjoyed doing but never really um, gave myself the time to do it or made time to do it. I was always like, oh, I'm too busy to be painting. Um, but I really made an effort to like sit down and make things. I, it's very calming to me. I really enjoy it. But making time to paint. Just make things in general. Making time to make things. So I'm guessing you probably have a hobby of some kind, even if it's not crafting. If it's like, maybe you like to ride bikes. <laughs> Random choice, but uh, maybe you like to play video games. Maybe you love to write music, but you're too busy. When there is a gaping hole in your heart, filling it back up, with hobbies that you love, making time to do things that you love does wonders. It's really been good for me, which is kind of why I wanted to make this video. I wanted, I knew I was going to be making an ornament and I was like, you know what? Let's share this with everyone. It's been a long time since I've done any like real DIY content and I miss it. It's good for my soul. <laughs> so I do like such prettier little strokes. I don't know if you guys can see, let me zoom you in carving all of these little hairs into this polymer clay. So much more satisfying than <laughs> in the marshmallow. I think for this one, since I can't use those same like plastic doll eyes like these things that I used in the other ornament uh, because you have to bake this in the oven and they would melt. I think I'm going to use white instead of black because I want to paint them green which is the color that her eyes were. Although if I could just easily pop the little black ones in there I would do that for sure. She's going to look a little scary with her like solid white eyeballs until she's done baking and then we can paint them. <laughs> 
Okay, she looks creepy. There's some conflicting messages about when you're sad. What to do when you're sad. How to make yourself feel better when you're sad. On one hand, surround yourself with people. Go hang out, socialize, see your friends. And on the other hand, let it out, cry, feel it. Feeling it as much as it sucks, it helps heal it, you know? These two <laughs> things are not often compatible. I'm not trying to go to the mall in a blanket and mascara streaks, you know what I mean? But I found, I found the secret weapon and that is Twitch. You, yeah, you heard me, Twitch. I love Twitch and I have, I used to stream on Twitch like a few years ago. Might come back, thinking about coming back. I have been a fan and a viewer casually of Twitch for a long time, a few years. But since August, I've really like zoom, zoomed in, narrowed in on Twitch. And the reason is when you are feeling like you just can't, when you are blanketed, burritoed up in your room, crying and you don't want to be around people but you don't want to be alone you know what i mean twitch is perfect it's perfect no one can see you i mean like if you're not the streamer obviously no one knows what's happening here but you're around people basically talk to people you can like type to people you can interact with the streamers you can like hang out the whole point of twitch is just hanging out and each streamer has their own little community their own little group of friends that all hang out and most of them are really really nice and will like accept you in there's inside jokes all the different little fun emotes for like different people you're subscribed to it's so so fun and it really feels like a big group of friends just like spending the evening together or like hanging out in the afternoon making a freaking christmas ornament you know what i mean like it has been so good for healing me because it's that key it's that key of being around people but not being around people you know what i mean i feel like i've unlocked the magical mystery of the world and because it's so much easier to control the fur on the polymer clay you can really like get interesting with it like you can do different growth patterns and hair directions and stuff it's really 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 fun to do hair patterns on stuff like this um assuming that <laughs> you're not in a hurry because it does take a long time but she's looking so cute so far other than her little demon eyes but you know we'll get there we'll get there so i know <laughs> so before i go any further with this one notice that when i did the legs on the marshmallow one <laughs> i kind of just made them like growing out like <laughs> like a human leg <laughs> which is not how cats sit. They kind of sit with their leg, like their little winged leg, you know what I mean? So we're gonna redesign the leg a little bit from marshmallow to polymer clay. Oh my god, yes, these, these back legs are so much better. They look so much more like a cat's legs. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> they actually look a lot more like her coloring too than the other one, so. Oh my god, I like this a lot. this one she's almost done because I have a little more control over working with polymer clay I kind of want to put a little collar on her maybe um, one that says 2019 or something like that uh, because all of the other yearly ornaments have the year like displayed across I was just gonna write it on the bottom but I think I'm kind of thinking now like a little pendant with a year on it and then loop it back through the tail. Ooh, close one. Ideally, <laughs> something I should have decided before. And speaking of streaming, that is another thing that has been amazing for me. I have been streaming so much on 
Patreon. I think there's something like close to 20 episodes of Good Morning Games, which is our gaming live stream, has been like probably the most like helpfulest thing to me. Obviously, it's not gonna be for everyone. It's been the biggest thing for me um, because I spend all day alone. It feels so empty. It's empty without her. The um, emptiness of not having Pipey here is extraordinarily apparent. Streaming with my friends on Patreon. Oh my god. I feel so much less alone with my buddies online. Our little community is so tight and it <laughs> it makes me feel so connected to my community. I was telling one of my streams the other day about how how much more I like streaming right now than I do making videos because I mean don't get me wrong, I love making videos, but Right now, what I need is the interaction, and when I'm making videos, the only interaction is in the comments after the video is up. Most of the video making time is me sitting alone, <laughs> talking to a camera in my room by myself, me editing by myself. It's a lot of alone time, <laughs> but when I'm streaming, I can talk to you guys, and yes, I'm still technically in a room by myself, but I'm talking to someone and they are giving me conversation back. So it is like, it's my favorite thing right now. It's all I can think about. It's like, <laughs> I've been having dreams about streaming. So I think that um, maybe in January, I'll come back to Twitch and open the streams up for everyone. I just enjoy them so much. I really want to do it more. So if you want to go ahead and like pre-follow my Twitch channel, not back yet. I'm still streaming on Patreon right now, but maybe in January I'll be coming back. I have plans to come back, so eventually I'll come back. We can hang out, IRL, and be friends with each other. <laughs> if you click the little heart, it is a follow button. Following is completely free on Twitch, and that way you'll know um, when I go live on Twitch, whenever that may be. I think the ghost of my old channel should still be there. <laughs> okay, I think I have... <laughs> I could keep working on this all day long, but I think I should go ahead and pop this in the oven. Let her harden up a little bit. Yeah, this one is so cute. And it's heavy, but like, it's not too, too heavy. If we would have made it as big as her kawaii big sister <laughs> um yes that would have probably been too heavy for the tree let me grab one through her, the top of her head down into the base and one as kind of a support system in the tail as well so here she is post bake so while she was cooling I went through my um, like craft supply stuff, found some things that, okay, so I found these little hearts, which have a really nice like shiny glittery finish, and they're quite small. I was thinking that maybe if it isn't too big, cute, like maybe just gluing this on top of that little pendant there, and that way it'll be a heart. Um, instead and it'll be all shiny and I can write 2019 on that instead. I am at least down to try it. Also, I found these pipe cleaners, which are, I'm thinking that I will probably use to make a little halo, my little sweet baby angel. So gold pipes for pipes. And then what else did I find? Oh, I found this is some kind of wire. It's for like jewelry making and I thought we could make some little whiskers out of it for her too. Maybe. Um, but the next step now that she's dry is to go ahead and get some paint on her. Uh, we'll be painting the eyes, the collar, the paw, the ears, um, um, probably this pendant thing underneath here too. Okay. One thing that I have been really working on for me is being kinder to myself. 
I always try to be kind to everyone and it is something that I pride myself on um, just practicing kindness but I don't know I'm not always kind to me I'm kind to everyone but I'm not always kind to me and I'm really hard on myself all the time and that is not helpful <laughs> trying to be nicer to myself about like if I don't get a video done it doesn't matter it doesn't matter I'm just trying to do the best I can every day and and the best I can it's on a sliding scale if I'm having a bad day a really eggy day <laughs> The best is, it may not be very good, but if that's the best that I have in that moment, that's all right. And that's what I'm telling myself. Be kind to yourself, take care of yourself. Self-care is not always like a face mask and a bubble bath. It can be like letting yourself relax. <laughs> Self-care can be just actively being nicer to yourself. You know, it's important. And you probably don't do it enough. Be nice to you. Be nice to you. Okay, so here is Pipey so far. Oh my god, I love this side. <laughs> we have to glue on her little 2019 heart. Um, I want to try gluing whiskers on and just see what happens. <laughs> and then we just glitter her all over. Love, love, love her toe beans over here. I love them. She had a little black spot in her toe beans, baby. I kind of thought about putting this wire in earlier. Like ideally it would be nice if it was sticking just straight out of the clay, but because this was just free floating in my craft drawer, <laughs> I don't really know what this is made out of. So I don't want to just like stick it in my oven. You know what I mean? Would never recommend sticking some rando thing in your oven. <laughs> I think hot glue will be able to do it just as well. So. I'm gonna cut a few whisker slices. Okay, so we have these two in now and I think they are adorable. However, they had little glue, like hot glue blobby blobs. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill the rest of nose part in with hot glue and we'll just repaint that and it'll just be raised a little bit from um, the original like sculpt, but that's okay. Her nose stuck out of it anyway, so it's not that bad. It's not that bad. And then once it cools down, I'm going to press it all. Oh, it cools so fast. I'm just going to press it down so that it's smooth. I actually really like that. Look at it from the side here. You see the new shape that it kind of has given her face. I think it's more accurate to her face shape. So I am totally cool with a little hot glue addition there. I just have to repaint her nose and mouth, which is no big deal at all. It's so worth it. I love these little whiskers. They're so cute. <laughs> Now, if this were just a little figurine that I wanted to keep on my desk or something, I would probably just leave her like this because I love it. She's just so cute. <laughs> but she's an ornament. We shall glitter. We will probably lose some of the detail in the blacks and the brown here um, when we put glitter on it, but on a tree, it's gonna look perfect. So I like to put Mod Podge Glossy on my um, Christmas ornaments because it gives them a nice little shine when the Christmas light hits them. But it's also how I attach my glitter to the ornament. I kind of just do it how you would do a normal glitter glue where I put it down and then I put the glitter on top of it after that. Like I press the glitter down into the Mod Podge. So the order, <laughs> so the reason I do it in that order, if you Mod Podge the whole thing first, then the glitter will just sit on top of the Mod Podge and will probably come off all over your hands, all over your tree, all over your other ornaments, which, you know, if any time of your life is gonna be covered in glitter, Christmas is a good time for it. But um, I want the glitter to stay on my ornament. So <laughs> also if you put the glitter on first and then Mod Podge over it, the glitter is less sparkly, less shiny um, if it has Mod Podge on top of it. So what do I do is I kinda put the Mod Podge down and then press the glitter down into it. You know? You know? Oh, oh my god, I love her. I love her. 
but she is perfect. I think this is the best one of any year that I've made so far. Oh my god, this is so special. It's so special. I love it. And look at her fur. She looks so pretty. Little baby toe beans over here. It's all so shiny. Oh my god, my heart. My heart. So I think for now, in the Christmas ornament experimentation of 2019, <laughs> that I'm going to keep making my ornaments out of polymer clay uh, for the foreseeable future. However, this one, I took the little hook out of her head because I'm going to sit this cute, adorable, little pipey figurine on my desk. She's so cute and so big. She kind of looks like a little porg. So yeah, she's not a Christmas ornament anymore. Now she is like a, a desk decoration. Okay, well, shall we go put her on the tree this year, 2019? Sweet baby pipey, I love you. I miss you so, so much. And that's it for our ornament and our little desk deco. They're so cute. Um, and remember, everybody is grieving looks different. Um, feel free to drop what's helping you get through the day um, in the comments down below. One day at a time, just do the best you can. And I love you. Thank you all for being just the best community ever. Um, and I hope you have a happy holidays. I have a fun schedule um, planned for us. Jenna's coming back to take care of my eggy heart next week, so. <laughs> Thanks, Megan, for being our featured patron. Sorry you got such a bummer video, but I, <laughs> I hope that this helps someone. Um, and you know that you're not alone because even people who make happy content all the time aren't always super happy. <laughs> But we'll get through it. That's it for today. I hope you like the ornament. It's so sweet. I love it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. I love you.